wire and uh, nano tubes, but the system is boron nitride. See, as far as uh, this bioconjugation is concerned in recent time due to the development and understanding in the field of nanomaterials, nanoscience, and the excellent properties of biomolecules. The another area or a very important area has emerged that is the nano bio, bio nano or that kind of thing which is based on one of the most important aspect that is the bioconjugation. That means uh, mixing or having attachment between the two different types of uh, material that is one being the biomolecules or biological materials. But uh, though this is, this has many great applications, but still there are many issues which are to be looked in. And one such important issue as far as these systems are concerned is the interaction mechanism between the both systems, that is the biomolecules and organic, inorganic, whatever we consider. So to make the bioconjugation. So I will just briefly go through in the beginning, that is what is bioconjugation. And then of course, different systems where the bioconjugation have been achieved and the people have tried for the applications. And uh, then of course, the drawbacks in different system reaching to the two dimensional system or maybe the boron nitride systems, which I will be considering. As far as the biomolecules are concerned, I am considering three different sets. One that is the amino acids. In amino acids also not all. I have considered five to six amino acids of different uh, configurations. And of then uh, the nucleobases and then the alkalides attached with three different system. As I said, for the boron nitrate of course, boron nitrate seed, boron, boron nitrate uh, nanotube and uh, nano ribbon. So that is what is the brief outline of uh, this. As I said, the in general, right, or how the introduction goes that uh, is basically these are the applications or these are the things which are basically the basis of nano biotechnology field or the application of nano materials in context of the biological applications. And in fact, all these things have been done or being done in particularly uh, for the application point of view and one such application is the drug delivery systems, right? So in this regard, the development of new drug delivery systems and mechanism to control them is mandatory and that is where basically we require to understand the mechanism which is important for the interaction between these systems. So in this context of drug delivery, we have the natural or synthetic compounds having individual activities may be linked together to create new molecules having a very specific activity. And that is being achieved by the bioconjugation. That is what I have written. The bioconjugation provides a means of, means to attain this goal. And uh, what is bioconjugation? In fact, uh, in a very simple nutshell, we can define it. Bioconjugation is a chemical a strategy, basically, to form a stable covalent link between molecules and at least one of which is biomolecule, as I said in the beginning. But when it comes to the nanomaterial, normally it is one that is the inorganic materials and other is the biomolecule. And nanomaterial, nano you have all sort of uh, different things. This is the biomolecules, for example, protein, DNA, RNA, etc., that is attached to a nanomaterial is known as basically the nano bioconjugate. So it is, in fact, the same definition as I have said. So this has this is has become one of the central issue in pharmaceutical sciences, and uh, it is at the basis of the drug discovery. And these are the few very important uh, papers which basically talks about this. Uh, uh, nano bio conjugations. As far as the nano bio conjugation, or in fact the bio conjugation is concerned, the first thing which is started that is from the polymer conjugation. Right? And the polymer bio conjugates may be generally defined as natural or synthetic macromolecules covalently linked to the biomolecules or biological moieties. 
and examples are polymer drug conjugates, polymer antibody conjugates, polymer DNA conjugate and so on. And uh, the polymer you can categorize as synthetic, natural or combination of both and but it has the limitations and that those limitations are that natural polymers although most abundant and biodegradable degradable are difficult to reproduce and of course the purified. Non biodegradable polymers are needed to be removed by surgery after they release the drug at the targeted site and then the synthetic polymers have high immunogeneity which prevent their long term use. So, these are the limitations associated with this and therefore, the inorganic nanoparticles because uh, uh, nanomaterials as we know that it has it, we can say that it has solution for everything. So, therefore, that we have the interfacing inorganic nanoparticles with the biomolecules and uh, in this basically we exploit the nanotechnology tools to, to find or to found allow for the control of the interactions between material surface and biological entities down to the molecular level and that is why the interaction become important or basically the mechanism under, to understand the mechanism is important and these are the nano surfaces, nano structures and more generally nanomaterials have been used to promote a specific cellular functions like addition, mobility and diffraction, uh, differentiation. So, different form of drug, drug nano containers as polymeric nanoparticles, liposomes, magnetic nanoparticles and carbon nanostructures are extens ext extensively studied and those are of course that is listed in this particular paper, but it still it has some problem or the challenges and that one challenging aspect of rendering nanoparticles truly useful for biosensing has been the need to stabilize the nanoparticles surface with biocompatibility or biocompatible and non-reactive coating materials. And uh, the surface modification can be particularly challenging for inorganic nanoparticles or nanomaterials. So, these are the challenges basically associated with the nanoparticle. Therefore, as we have uh, had a very good talk in the morning uh, about the 2D mat materials or the 2D nano sheets and therefore, now you can make 2D sheets of uh, any element, any material from the periodic table and that is why it has great uh, pos uh, possibility and uh, then we come to that why 2D nano sheets are important. They are open to manipulation such as the, we have the increased surface area. It is easy in functionalization and easy to develop the hybrid materials by stacking up the 2D mono layer. That means you can have the layer 2D structures and which can be conjugated with the biomolecules. So, with the isolation of uh, single layer graphene sheets, there has been notion of isolating other 2D materials and that is why I said and in fact in the morning uh, Professor G.P. Das said that you have all sort of 2D materials existing now and uh, such in those category there are many which are very important like uh, boron nitrite nano sheets and then of course uh, the tube etc. Then after that it was the MOS2 that is dichalcogenides and hexagonal boron nitrate as I said with the trinable band gap and therefore you can have the range of band gap associated with these 2D materials. So, with a large variety of available nano sheets it is possible to tailor their interaction, tailor their properties according to the needs and exploit them for the practical applications. Our practical application basically here is in terms of the designing or developing the bio sensors, uh, bio detectors and all those things right. So, those things are basically our uh, basic aim and in that we can have the 2D materials. As I said that the first material as far as 2D is concerned it is the graphene and therefore, everything is started first with the graphene and then graphene or the graphene related materials such as the graphene oxides and other things. So, graphene we need not to discuss, but it has been used as an effective biosensor for the detection of 
glucose, oxidase, hemoglobin, and all other things. So that means the two D systems are uh, useful, or they have the potential to be used as the biosensors or the those kind of things. This is again related to the uh, graphene only. So you have these things are that drug and gene delivery, cancer image, graphene based nanomaterials have been. So it, it, it has been used extensively for these purposes to develop the biosensor, biodetectors, and all other things. But uh, one of the major issues faced by the graphene is the restacking of its plate structure due to obligation, which potentially reduces its surface area apart from the known things such as the band gap and other things. So the graphene oxide has some solution to this, and the <coughs> which is of course a graphene C derivated with the carboxyl, hydroxyl, and epoxyl group mainly on the basal plane of the graphene, and that is what uh, is the graphene oxide. And the solubility of graphene in most solvent is very poor, whereas the graphene oxide is good. It has the good solubility in water and the polar solvent due to the presence of epoxy, hydroxyl, and the carboxylic acid groups on the basal plane. So its solu solubility is better than the graphene, and that is why, <coughs> sorry, the, though the graphene and the graphene oxide has been unique features, they have been extensively used, but there are some limitations such as its age structure, toxicity, which is hazardous, and can change the function of the biomolecule. So these are the some issues which is related to the graphene and the graphene oxides. And therefore, the other options that lies with the MOH2, but that uh, belongs to this family owing to honeycomb lattice like uh, structure which covalently bonded, uh, M S M O that is sulfur, molybdenum and sulfur C, which in turn bonded by Van der Waal interaction. Similar to the graphene, it is also a 2D material. Due to presence of hexagonal structure in the basal plane, they could be used to bind aromatic and conjugated compounds with the help of Van der Waal interactions. But again, it has some limitations. That is, it has been demonstrated that by decreasing the number of layers in 2D MOH2, the toxicity increases, which is attributed to, to be to the enhanced surface area defects and ages. So these had some problem, and therefore, at least uh, those problems are not with the boron nitride nanostructures. So therefore, and in fact, the after graphene, yeah, I need it. Right, so of course the boron nitride sheet is in fact the second to the graphene, in fact as far as the discoveries of uh, the two dimensional structure is concerned. And uh, this is referred as white graphene. Within each hexagonal boron nitride layer, atoms are bound together by strong covalent bonds while there are weak Van der Waal forces between the different layers. And uh, these boron nitride nanostructures do have ionic chemistry that can render them soluble in various solvent. So solubility is there. And processable for applications such as nanofillers in polymeric nanocomposites and supports for the catalyst, catalysts or sensor. Their non-toxicity makes them more suitable over carbon nanostructures to be used in bio applications. So, as I said, it is non toxic. Boron polymorphs, including boron nitride nanostructures and boron nitride nanotubes, are excellent oxidation resistant material. They are stable up to 800 degrees centigrade in air and inert against oxidative acid. So due to its chemical inertness behavior, boron nitride is suggested as a safe biological cargo for passing through the cavity. So as far as the biological application is concerned, <coughs> this is this has more advantage as far as the 
right? So, uh, Trudy boron nitride has large band gap, that is 4 to 6 electron volt. And in fact, in the boron nitride nanotube, boron nitride nan nano ribbon, etc., the band gap of course reduces, but still it is more than 3 electron volt in all cases, but it is lower than this 4 to 6. Unlike carbon nanotube, electronic and structural properties of boron nitride nanomaterials like uh, boron nitride nanotube is independent of its diameter and length. And uh, of course, the Fiji absorption is more favorable on boron nitride surface because of the ionic nature of the boron nitride sheet. So it has further property that it is high temperature resistant chemical inertness, environmental safety, and poor wettability make them a good candidate for the bioconjugation. So, uh, we have gone step by step to uh, the boron nitride, that is how boron nitride is in fact useful. As I said in the beginning, our study basically focuses on the boron nitride nanostructures with some selected biomolecules, as I said, uh, nucleobases, bases, amino acids, and uh, some alkalides. Our basic aim basically is to understand the interaction mechanism, that is the first thing, and to express the subtle differences in the absorption strength of several biomolecules and the boron nitride nanostructure surfaces. That includes all three which I have mentioned. To find two-dimensional materials for efficient drug delivery or the biosensing and that kind of thing. Some basic calculations except this calculating the absorption energy or uh, uh, dispersion corrected calculation, some of the basic calculations we have reported in this such as its dynamical stability, band structures and other things, right. So these basic calculations of all structure, all considered structures have been done and we are just extending this for the study of those things. Of course, uh, we use the quantum espresso for these calculations. Uh, GGA functional of uh, PB is used. Energy and charge density cutoff uh, is given here. And these are just the parameters for the boron sheet. We have provided 12 angstrom vacuum in jet direction, while for the boron nitrite nanotube and the nano ribbon, uh, 12 angstrom vacuum is provided in two directions, that is in x and y direction. So this is the calculational details uh, which have been applied almost in all calculations which I am reporting here or I will be presenting. So these are the systems which I am considering on which we want to study or we have studied this absorption of the biomolecules. Those are the HN, uh, sorry, this hexagonal boron sheet, boron nitride nanotube, boron nitride nano ribbon, that is both armchair and the zigzag. So these are the four systems which we have been considering and uh, that as far as the biomolecules, the first set of biomolecules which we are considering is the amino acids and uh, there are three different groups that is basic, acidic and neutral and we are considering from each group one, one at least so to see that the properties as well as its absorption with those boron nitrate nanostructures. So these are the just marked one which we have considered in our uh, investigations. So first we start with uh, the boron nitrite, hexagonal boron nitrite sheet. So this is the 4 by 4, uh, 4 boron nitrite sheet and uh, this is as I said that 5 amino acids we have selected. So T1 is the alanine, then lysine, aspartic acid, then serine and the glycine. So these 5 as I said we have considered all three groups, that is one is basic, another is acidic and another from the uh, neutral group. So these all five have been considered first on the boron nitride sheets. So this is for the, as far as the band structure is concerned, so this is for the hexagonal boron nitride sheet and this is what it 
band gap. Now we'll be taking one by one. So first is this glycine. Uh, of course, this is not optimized one. Just it is shown in animation so that uh, glycine comes on the boron nitride sheet. So this is what we have the band structure associated with the glycine adsorbed on the boron nitride sheet. And uh, not very significantly, but the band gap reduces. Now from the 4.63, it comes to the 4.347. As far as the adsorption energy is concerned, uh, without, the without considering the Van der Waal interaction, that is the D correction, uh, the interaction energy was point, uh, minus point zero four one, very negligible. But when we include the Van der Waal, then the interaction increase, in interaction energy increases significantly. So this is one thing that is we have included the dispersion correction in the calculation of all these. Uh, investigation as far as adsorption energy is concerned. This band structure is of course without, uh, right. This is for the L9 and uh, again uh, this is uh, the band gap and uh, the energies, adsorption energies are given here. You can see that the with Van der Waal interaction, the, there is a significant change in the adsorption energy for. So it, this is the case with all in fact. Uh, this is for the serine and as you can see that band gap. Here it is very significantly changing. So it is 3.264 electron. So by using these biomolecules, in fact, you can tune the band gap of the system also. But our purpose is basically to see that how the adsorption basically takes place. So in this case, again, that you have the significantly, significantly increased Van der Waal, sorry, adsorption energy that is, that this is for the aspartic acid same way, right? And this is for the lysine. So you can see that, of course, uh, by inclusion of Van der Waal interaction, the energy increases significantly. Of course, the band gap does not change much, except in the case of this series. This is in table form. That is, you have all configurations. and. Uh, nature of side chain, band gap, and adsorption energy without. Right. Now it is for the armchair. So again, we have done for all five cases. And uh, this is what is the band. I will go slightly quickly uh, because everything is listed again. So it will be clear. So in the case of uh, this armchair boron nitrite nanotube, you have uh, this configuration. And again, of course, except in the lysine absorbed over the BNNNT, all have, uh, and of course, the serine, the adsorption energy, even including the Van der Waal interaction is significantly low. But in these cases, it is high. That may be because of, as I showed, the chain associated with this. This is for the Bioconjugation with the bone on nitrite nano ribbon. Here we have used the nucleobases. So, again, we have taken all five nucleobases. And uh, this is we have plotted the density of states associated with uh, all that is, this is simple armchair boron nitrite nano ribbon. And this is with the adenine, then gunine, and all other things. So. This is how the band changes, and this is again we have listed in the table that how the band gap or the homo lumo gap basically varies in the case of this. This is the adsorption energy. This is here we have just listed that is associated with the um, Van der Waal corrections. This is the distance uh, from the surface to the molecules in the optimized structure. This is for the uh, zigzag. And the, so this is the band gap, and you can see that the band gap can be tuned. That is ranging from 3.4, 3.37 to the 4.29, and this is what is the adsorption energy in the case. All are. Right, this is uh, 
Another system that is for the boron nitride nanotube and the boron nitride nano ribbon, both we have considered. And uh, we have uh, absorbed the two alkalis, that is the caffeine and the nicotine. Basically, the point here is to make or to design the device which can uh, detect or the sense these caffeine and nicotine. And uh, of course, in those, these two, that is in the case of uh, VNNT and BNNR, that BNNR is, of course, the better uh, system which absorbs these things. This is uh, just as uh, PDOS. I will not go into the detail. Uh, as, uh, so this is the energy, that is all parameters which you have calculated without dispersion and uh, with dispersion here it is uh, listed. So as you can see that the band gap variation as well as the adsorption energy. So here, this is in addition to that, we have also calculated the quantum conductance for both, that is the BNNT and the BNNR, and that you can see that uh, the adsorption basically increases the conductance in the case of these systems. Uh, this is, in fact, the summary. So the comparison of adsorption energy for boron nitride nanotube and hexagonal boron sheet with amino acids. And uh, here you can see that the order of adsorption energy for hexagonal boron nitride sheet and the boron nitride nanotube is in this way. That means the sequence basically changes. So uh, that it can again be used to find out the sequencing as well as for the uh, sensing. Again, in this case, uh, when you have the armchair boron nitride nano ribbon and the zigzag, so our study demonstrated that the nucleobases Fiji absorb on zigzag as well as the armchair follow the interaction order like uh, this. This is for the alkalides. So the caffeine and the nicotine molecules are strongly absorbed on the boron nitride nano ribbon. Then the uh, because of the SH, in fact, boron nitride nanotube, the binding strength of these molecules is found to be stronger with the incorporation of dispersion correction. So dispersion correction is important. So that was summary or you can say feature basically. The amino acids exhibit significantly different interaction when it is when Fiji absorbed on the boron nitride sheet and the boron nitride nanotube. Uh, boron nitride nanotubes has an excellent material in sensing amino acids. And uh, the binding energy is, of course, different for BNNR nucleobases than the graphene. And the BNNR may act as a superior candidate for sensing of nucleobases and DNA sequencing, of course. The consideration of van der Waal interaction is necessary or important for investigating its uh, binding of considered nanostructure with the molecule. So this is what uh, is the summary. And uh, this is what uh, are the funding which